fun. We're going to do our last talk for the evening. Last but not least, James Beerley. Please give a, rans a round of applause for James. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me here. Um, okay, so this is the How to Give a Talk talk, uh, and I am James Byerly. Um My uh, contact info, if you're interested, and we'll just get rolling on this. Uh, first, quick agenda, just so you guys know what we're going to talk about, so maybe you can decide if, what time would be a good time to go get a beer. Um, our purpose, introduction, uh, how to prep for your talk, how to uh, uh, do your slide deck, how to present it, um, some things about live demos, and then uh, questions. So the purpose. Um, so purpose really, you know, help you be more prepared. Now this is not going to be the end all of presentation guidelines. Uh, this is for maybe to help you out for when you get voluntold by your boss to discuss that new security solution, uh, do some uh, security awareness training for some new hires. Uh, hey, career day at, at a school. M maybe don't do PowerPoint for fifth graders. They probably won't like that. Uh, college course. Uh, another example, actually, the company I just came from, we had to uh, do presentations as part of our leadership course. So you would sit through, and every, every session, you have to deliver about a five-minute uh, speech about something. Um, so also provide some lessons learned. Learn from the mistakes that I've made. Learn from mistakes that other people have made. Uh, this is uh, only my second uh, um, uh, visit here to SecDSM. So this isn't necessarily like, oh, things that I've seen here. This is just things that I've seen, whether it's at other conventions, other trainings, uh, just various stuff. And the last thing is, I promised Abby I would do this. Uh, this is the price you pay that if you accept coffee from her, she will guilt you into, is she even in the room? Like, yeah, you know, she'll guilt you into uh, doing, a, doing a talk. So, uh, so introduction. So I was previously with an MSP here in central Iowa, uh, did security risk and network assessments, um, ran that program, also did awareness training. So uh, a lot of our uh, current clients, a lot of just organizations uh, that would say, hey, we've heard about you guys. Can you come speak at our podiatry? You know, nothing like 100 foot doctors listening about cyber risks and stuff like that. Uh, prior to going into IT, I did, uh, uh, was with Navy, mostly in operations intelligence. I never really touched computers, hardly. Um, so I also did instructor work. I actually, when I uh, was going through my training for the Navy, they switched from the old chalkboard to PowerPoint right in the middle of our uh, Christmas break. We, we came back after Christmas and the chalkboards were gone. It was just a whiteboard and a projector that a dude had to wheel out and use. And that was kind of the way that the Navy brought on death by PowerPoint. Um, I've got a few certs. Yep, great. Uh, working on a few more. Uh, father of four kids. Um, I, I, uh, I decided to go ahead and get three of them real quick by adopting them. Um, my, my daughter, Raven, she is a budding social engineer. She actually uh, uh, tried to trick my wife into divulging where we were going for our surprise day. She comes up to her and says, hey, dad told me where I was where we were going, I just can't remember. And my wife kind of looked at her and said, uh, absolutely not, he told you. You, nice try. And, and then told me, and I was like, yep, she's going to be trouble. So, um, all right. So uh, first thing, you know, how to prepare for the talk. So this is, uh, this comes in to kind of breaks down into two areas. First, knowing your audience. Uh, hopefully you get told what kind of audience you're going to deal with. Uh, whether it's your own uh, fellow employees, whether it, you know if it's your C-level type people, um, that will kind of help to drive the the tone, the subject, everything that goes into your talk. Um, so just a couple examples. Um, I, I, I know uh, Ryan did a, a, a talk last year on Bloodhound. Um, does anyone remember that talk? It was kind of a general one on Bloodhound. <laughs> Ryan does, good job. Um, so it actually, just funny enough, I, it was one of the first ones that I clicked on, the fact that I knew who he was and that it's Bloodhound. I was like, cool, like I'm interested. His talk, in, in my opinion, with a couple of tweaks, could have been something that wasn't super technical. He could have delivered that to CISOs, to somebody that maybe has an understanding of security, but they're not in the weeds like many others. 
Uh, some of the other talks that maybe are out there, they might be more uh, technical and wouldn't necessarily be a good fit for C-level types or end users. Um, your, your audience will also set that tone. Uh, if these are stakeholders in your business, you probably are going to be a little more formal versus just, hey, guys, it's my turn to come up here and talk to us about the tools that we use. Um, knowing your venue. So uh, this is, uh, oh, uh, one other thing about audience. Uh, the audience may also drive your manner of dress. Uh, yes, it, today's age, you know, beards, long hair, all that kind of stuff is, is cool. But you may still have to give a talk where it's not a bad idea to throw on a button down shirt and actually button it, you know, just, uh, just things that I've noticed. Uh, your venue. Um, so knowing your venue, the layout of the room really matters. Uh, this one, obviously, it's set up for it, so it's a good, uh, a good venue to speak at. I've done uh, security talks for clients where we were in a basement conference room, and it was a round table, and I had to stand in one spot, so I had people looking up at me like this, and then they also had two monitors that were also displaying the, the slides, which made setting it up a pain in the rear and just everything else that came into that. So... Always, if you can, try to find out what's the room look like. Uh, what do I need for AV? Uh, when Brandon reached out to me, that was the first thing I asked him. I said, what's in the room? He's like, do you have HDMI? I said, I have adapters. So um, I have just a bag full of adapters. Uh, I just went out and like anything that connects mini display port to whatever, I bought it. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. So um, all right, and then uh, other things. Uh, microphones. If you're actually mic'd up, uh, one thing, if you've never used like just a little wireless mic that's on your lapel or something, those pick up everything. So don't get mic'd up until you're absolutely ready. Uh, don't think you can stifle that burp. It will carry through it. Not my own personal experience, one that I've sat through. So, <laughs> All right. Slide deck. Um, can, anyone, can anyone actually read those words up there? Good. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm, I'm not here trying to build the PowerPoint execution standards. I'm here to just deliver some ideas, things that I've seen, uh, whether it was things that I was trained on or just experience. So uh, bullet points. Uh, when you have a slide, try to keep your bullet points, three to four of them per slide. And then each bullet point, no more than a sentence. Uh, you've probably all seen these, uh, these you know, wall of text. Some people call them an eye chart. That's, that's just, that's a wall of text. That's ridiculous. That was out of a uh, top 10 worst PowerPoint presentations. I pulled that one from. Thankfully, none of mine were in there. So I guess I'm doing okay. Um, so if you, like, so this one is an executive summary for, a, for some wireless market. So this, in my opinion, this could have, this slide, this executive summary probably could have been an entire uh, deck could have been six seven broken down by bullet points things like that but somebody decided that just this would be a really good idea um so sometimes if you do have to put up a wall of text or if you're showing something out of a log file or something where yes i want you to see the overall picture but i need you to zoom in this is where you can not right click but you can instead do kind of a little zoom out and it's still i mean it, you know, it's still a lot to read. Um, and this was actually, uh, what, what, what I found interesting with this was that it says that people used approximately 230 megabytes per month on their phones. This was actually in 2010. I'm sure that's probably like 20 gigs nowadays. Um, uh, so other points, uh, pictures. Uh, if they're relatable to the topic, uh, absolutely. Again, that comes down to kind of knowing your audience. Um, if you're briefing your C-level about something, you probably aren't going to throw in some memes, you know, or some funny gifts. But if you work somewhere uh, like that, they, they may be okay with it. Uh, embedded stuff. Uh, videos, man, test those out. Test those and test those and test those to make sure that, one, they turn on when you want them to and that they actually will go out and connect. I've, I've seen that go uh, poorly as well. Um, an interesting thing in some of my Navy training, they actually encourage us this, again, this was like the mid nineties. They encouraged us to, for every 
four slides you'd have of like an intelligence briefing, maybe throw a not safe for work type picture in there. Um, so you'd be given a, a, a deck to work with, like a classified deck, and then you'd be on your own hook to throw in a few pictures. Um, so it, it kept people's attention, but probably they don't allow that anymore. Uh, colors, text size, uh, as I say this, I'm like, man, I hope you guys can all uh, see all that up here. Uh, your lighting will affect that. I'm actually thankful, you know, lights got turned off here. If it's super bright, you may uh, run into some problems. If you can go to where you're actually going to give that speech, or if you've given speeches in there before or seen other people, you know, just know, like, hey, I probably can't have a dark background with, a, you know, a dark text or something. Um, this was another bad slide. Uh, this is a, another blob of text uh, superimposed over a car. <laughs> so uh, you, can, you can read some parts of it. Other parts are a bit of a struggle. Uh, transitions. Uh, your transitions between slides, your animations when you're pulling up different stuff. Uh, don't get crazy with it. They're, they're pretty cool the first couple of times. Uh, and then after that, you know, it's, it just becomes a bit of a, a distraction, especially if you're adding sounds. I did one, or I sat through one where the guy, every time he clicked to advance a bullet point, it was a, it was a shot, like it was a, like a rifle shot or something. And after a while, I'm just like, okay, I'm probably going to need hearing protection. Um, the, uh, yeah, lightsaber sound. I mean, it's cool the first couple times, but, and then after that, you, you got to turn it off. Um, also, when you're doing transitions, being careful about not uh, advancing too far. If you're shuff, you know, through your slides, um, you know, mashing on the buttons too much and you go, you jump two slides ahead. That's really tricky too when you run into places like, you know, if you're almost doing like a question and answer, when in doubt, maybe just put it on a different slide. Like, so a question would be on one slide and answer would be on the second slide. Um, the real big thing is that all this stuff, it just takes away from your topic. If you don't, if you have all these technical issues, if you all have all these little glitches, it just makes things a little less smooth. And as I say that, I'm being very careful to tap it only once. <laughs> uh, so how to present it. So if you've never seen it, now this is in uh, the newer versions of Office for Windows. If you have Mac, I, I, I don't know if you have this or not, but presenter mode. Presenter mode is amazing. It's actually what I'm using right now. Uh, so what you're seeing there is kind of what I'm seeing. Um, so the great thing about it, oops, and see, there I go, uh, goofing up my animations, is that it has one advantage is that it allows you to face your audience. Uh, how many people have kind of sat through one where the guy had to talk to the the screen the entire time? That gets a little that gets a little tricky. Makes it hard for them, harder to project their voice, especially if they don't have a microphone. Uh, other good things has a timing. So up in the uh, top right corner, or sorry, top top left corner, it shows you how much time you've been on this. As soon as you start the slideshow, it will then start to kick on. So this is good, especially when you're practicing. So you'll know, okay, am I going too long? Am I going too short? Maybe if I'm rushing into slides. Uh, if you're not practicing this in front of a live audience of some sort, uh, you, you should. I'll show you uh, who my live audience is. Uh, the other nice thing about this is that it gives you the notes for that slide, so that kind of that bottom section, and then also shows you what the next slide is. That way, if you want to have like a segue into that one. Uh, a couple other things about presentation, uh, your intro and branding. Um, if, if you've uh, attended enough conventions, you know that some conventions, if you start getting salesy, you, they'll look at you funny. And then you've probably been to some where it's, it feels like it's a demonstration at the end. The guy's practically handing you a quote for their product. Uh, that was a future con just a few weeks ago. Um, your, your introduction, you should uh, keep it to the reason for the presentation. Uh, whatever certs that you have that may kind of matter in that role, um, those are good to bring up. But again, if you're, if you're talking to just a room full of foot doctors or a room full of lawyers, they may not know what CISSP is. They may not know what OSCP is. They just, they're like, okay, yeah, I've got letters behind my name too. So uh, some talks, like I said, need to be free of the branding. So know your audience. I had to do a, a Chamber of Commerce event that, uh, I, and this was when I was with my company, I had to remove every shred of branding, not even the company logo, 
Uh, the only time that I could actually disclose it was, hi, I work at so-and-so, and then move on, uh, which was also weird because two of the people in the very front were also with IT companies. So, tad awkward. Um, all right, so face your audience. Practice with those people. These are the ones that I practice with. I do not practice with my children because they ask way too many questions, and they don't have the same attention span that my dogs do, especially when I have jerky. So I sit there, jerky next to me, and I go through it. They're not going to ask any questions. That's the great thing about these dogs. So um, lasers. Uh, a lot of your clicking tools have a laser that you can use. Uh, just be careful with it. Uh, not necessarily sweeping it across people, but just the twirling it around the screen gets, gets to be distracting. Same thing with your mouse pointer. Um, some people get a little nervous and not sure what to do with their hands, so they start moving it around, and it, and it shows up. Oh, does it show up on this? Oh, good. Okay, so I can move it around. See, now I can get all just, now it's just going to be crazy. Um, eyes around your room. Uh, you want to do that for a couple different reasons. One, you get nonverbal clues from people. So if your talk maybe is a little technical, and you see some people that just have that deer-in-the-headlights look, then maybe need to try to take a couple more minutes to explain some things. Also, it's check the alertness. Uh, if you can avoid it, never give a uh, presentation after lunch. I've done that, and I've watched almost 100 people from a bank start taking turns nodding off. So occasionally, I would just accidentally tap the mic, or I would raise my voice just to kind of snap a few people out of it. C kind of a passive-aggressive way of keeping your audience. Um, all right. Live demos. Um, so this, uh, um, first off, and this is a huge lesson I learned, uh, do not rely on the wireless that is provided by the venue. Uh, I'll say that again, do not rely on the wireless that is provided by the venue. Uh, if you can, bring a hotspot, bring, uh, you know, just use your phone, something, or uh, in some cases, try to keep everything all local. Um, uh, one, uh, one demonstration that I typically would do would, would involve pulling down Netcat. Again, simple stuff because I'm just trying to show an audience, hey, don't leave your computer unlocked or bad things will happen when people put thumb drives in. So pull down Netcat. Well, right as I'm getting to the demo, everyone's all excited and I can't get my VMs to now talk to each other. I can't get out to pull down Netcat and suddenly it's like, well, let's just talk about what could have happened. <laughs> so this will now be a tabletop exercise. Um, screen size, especially if you're using uh, VMware, um, you, things may look great just on your, on your screen. Once you add a projector into it, all hell breaks loose. Um, th this, is, uh, this is something, so if you can, try to get there ahead of time. Try to put your, put your stuff up, especially if you have two. Like a lot of times you, you like to show the attacker and the victim. If you can put them side by side and they fit and they're still legible, Great. If not, you may have to slide side to side. Uh, again, just takes a little bit of uh, practice. When you're doing a demonstration, um, uh, also uh, one one key tip is uh, switching like to duplicate mode. So like right now well, on, on the Windows computers, you know you're in extended mode. That's what allows you to do the presenter view. If you set it back to duplicate your screens, now instead of trying to look up here while you're typing you can actually look at that screen and type. So it makes things just a little bit easier for you, the presenter. Uh, keep your demo to the technical level of your audience. Like I said, I would do demonstrations using Netcat, using like Mimikatz, just to say, hey, watch me pull a password right out of your Windows 7 machine. And, you know, and that would get the ooh and ah, and it would help to drive the point of lock your damn computer, don't have sucky passwords, don't have Windows 7 anymore, all those kind of things. Um, so, and, and again, try to reinforce some key point. So it would be very weird if I did a live demo right now. I guess, I guess in a way I am doing a live demo of this talk because we're having the talk, um, the talk of the talk. So that's just, um, a, uh, another way of, uh, just helping to drive home that, that point, whatever it may be. So, and then finally, I was going to leave you guys with a little bit of a cringy picture that comes from my, uh, uh, my days working in managed services. Um, this was a customer that I had to do an assessment, and uh, this was their the red box was their firewall, and it was hanging by this loop. Uh, one of the boxes that's above was a very expensive HP switch. The other box was their Avaya phone system. 
all of this hanging off these uh, cables here. So please, for the love of God, rack your stuff. Um, this was probably uh, probably four thousand dollars worth of equipment that was just dangling by a few Cat Five cables. Um, that just yeah, it, it's the kind of stuff that you see in small and medium businesses at times. So. Uh, that's all I got. This is a little shorter than uh, planned. I didn't maybe practice my timings nearly as much. Um, but if you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Oh, go ahead. There, I, I don't, but there are some that, uh, you know, like, for example, if you hit control, it will almost like kind of explode the mouse momentarily. Um, I can't remember the name of the of the tool, but it's just a little utility you can throw on there. The one trick that kind of comes into some of those is they may not always work when you're now inside like a VM. So uh, that's something. Now, uh, I didn't really talk about recording your demos, um, but that kind of goes into that same way of embedding them. The biggest thing, and I, I've seen this happen, if you record the demo and you're showing it, please don't try to pawn it off as being a live demo. <laughs> uh that uh, that can uh look a little weird um but yeah that's a that's a good point um you could also obviously change the settings inside your your windows machine but that would just take a little more time and you know need you to do a little more setup any other questions all right well there's nothing else i really appreciate this opportunity and uh guys enjoy whatever pizza and beer that's left thank you